Hey, have you ever in a situation where you want to calculate something but you don't have a calculator app or you don't want to use the typical Microsoft built-in app? Or you recently learned HTML, CSS and JavaScript so you want to make a web app but you don't want a complicated one? So yeah, maybe this is not the best intro but anyway, today we are going to build a calculator using simple HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So turn on your computer and let's get started. So let's open VS code and then click on open folder. Now go to that directory where you want to save your project. I'm going to create a new folder named it calculator. Then click on the select folder. Now close the welcome window. Now create an index.html file in this folder. Now we will create the basic structure of a calculator app in this HTML file. Now type exclamation and hit enter. By doing this, you will have a basic HTML template, often it called a boilerplate code. Now go to title tag and edit the name. This name will show in the website tab. I am going to name it my calculator. Now click on to this live server button. If you have installed live server, then it will open this HTML file in your browser and it will show the changes every time we save the file. If you don't have installed live server, then go to this extension tab and search for live server. Then click on the install button and restart your VS code. Mine is already installed, so I close the window and let's start our build. So first create a div and give it a class called main. Then add a p tag that is a paragraph tag. Let's name this a calculator. Now add a input element whose type attribute is text type. Then add a placeholder which is 0 and also I will give it a id called text field. For later we can use this element in CSS and JavaScript. Then I am going to add 19 button elements for the buttons. You can simply type button into 19 then hit enter and it will create 19 button tags. Or you can create one button tag and then hold shift plus alt on your keyboard and press down arrow. It will copy paste the tags. After creating the tags, add numbers and symbols to it. Then hit ctrl plus s to save. And it will show the live view of our web page in live server. We can use br tag or break tag to show this on new line. Also, I am going to use a clock emoji in the history button. You can add emojis by hitting windows plus period on your keyboard. Now we have successfully created our basic structure of our calculator. Now let's design this using CSS. Let's create a new file and named it main.css. After creating the file, we have to link this CSS file in our HTML file. So go to the HTML file and under head tag write link colon css and hit enter in href we have to give the path of our css file if the file is in the same directory then you can simply type the name of the file with extension otherwise use forward slash then type the file name with extension now let's start designing first i am going to add zero pixel margin and zero pixel padding all over the web page then I design the main class and give a background color red for now. Now I will add height and width and also center the div. And by the way, if you forget something or if you are struggling to find something like how to center a div, feel free to google it. You can also use the Chrome's inspect tool and determine certain things. I am going to give it a nice blue rounded border. Also I am going to design the buttons in our calculator.
I will give a purple color to the buttons for now. Later I will change it to something else. So now if I move the mouse over these buttons, nothing shows or happens. So let's add a hover effect. Now if I hover over the buttons, it will change to orange color. Now let's design the text field where we will see the numbers and results. Here I also add a rounded border and some paddings. Now if you notice that you will see that the equal button is small. So I am going to fix it. Go to index.html file and give a id to the equal button so that we can modify it in CSS file. Let's now design this equal button. Again I am using the inspect tool for accurate values. Finally I will design the calculator name and align it to this position. At the end I am going to add some simple light colors and also add a background color. You can choose any color you want. So our design part is completed but our calculator is still isn't a calculator because it does nothing. So let's add some logic to it. Or we can say let's program this calculator. To add logic to this we have to write javascript code to it. First I am going to create a file named it logic.js. Then go to the index.html file and write script colon src and then hit enter. Here in src that means source you have to give the javascript file path to just like the css file. Now go to the javascript file, at first I am going to declare some variables. Now I am going to target the text field in the html file using document.getElementById where we will pass the id of the text field. Now we have to select all the buttons. So I am going to target those buttons using all, where we will pass the element name. Now we will go through all the buttons and check every buttons whether it pressed or not. So for doing this I am going to write buttons dot for each where I put an arrow function with a parameter e and in this function I am going to add an event listener with every button. So when a button is clicked it will call a function named f. Now I am going to define the function f where I am going to pass the buttons as parameter. Now notice one thing, if I console log the buttons parameter then we will have a pointer event as an output. If we search carefully then we can see that under pointer events go to target and then we can see under inner html and inner text our buttons value. So we need those values 
and show to the user when a particular button is pressed. For identifying the buttons, we will use if else statement. We will write if the buttons dot target dot inner HTML equal to equal to C, then we will clear the screen by writing the text field dot value is equal to second invited comma open and close. Then we will set the string value to empty. In this way, we can define all other buttons. Now for the equal to button, we again check the value is equal or not. Now first, declare a variable named result. Now result equal to execute function and pass the text field dot value as parameter. Here execute is a user defined function. We will define this function later. At the end, we will add the values to string every time a button is clicked and reinitialize the string value. Now it's working, but still it doesn't show the results. So let's define the execute function. For defining the function, we will use function keyword and followed by the function name and pass the expression as parameter. That means the value. Then we will use try catch block for error handling. In try, I will use eval method and passes the parameter. The eval method evaluates or executes any argument in JavaScript. In general, we should avoid to use this method for security reasons. But in this project, we are only giving the numbers which are the buttons have. So it's safe to use. I just use this eval method and return the result. And in any error case, it will return error word. Now everything works great. But if I press the time button, then it is not showing the history or the previous results. So let's fix it. We will define another function named history. So when the time button is clicked, it will call the history function. Store the result in result variable. Then just show the result to the user and update the string value. Now in order to save the results, I am going to declare an array named records. So when there is a result, we update the string value. So then we will add that string value to the array by using records.push and the string value. Now in the history function, we will use try catch block. And in try, we will check that whether the array is empty or not by using if else. If empty, then return empty word. Else return the value of the array one by one using pop method. And if an error occurs, then return error word. Now you have a calculator app ready to work. But notice one thing that our website doesn't have an icon. So let's design a custom icon in Photoshop and add that in our HTML page and also add some background color in our website. There you go. Now you have a working calculator web app with a history button. So that is it for today guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions or if I did something wrong, comment down below let me know. And I will catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.